Alrighty, welcome everyone. This is the Pub Crawlers, and I am Bash. Joining me today is Kevy and Kispie. Heavy, hello everyone. Howdy, howdy. Say hi, Kevy. Hello, hello. I'm there sorry. we go. <laughs> uh, so we're going over the IRS Push charity the workshop. Push. This is the fifth section. Today's uh, topic is Form 990 overview. So, welcome. Woohoo! This is gonna be exciting. Let's get going. Hi, I'm Legal, the Stay Exempt Eagle, and I'll guide you, guys hear it all you through right? the courses here at Stay yep. Exempt. Yep, so, yep. Sweet, sweet, this sweet. course includes questions and activities that test your knowledge. You'll be instructed to click on the screen to answer the questions and participate in the activities. Watch, it's just Watch knowledge check. this button to begin learning about unrelated <laughs> business income. Unrelated. I mean, we technically have learned quite Hi, a bit about I'm the Bobby. Right. I just received a determination letter from the IRS granting tax exempt status for my new nonprofit. The Tribal Cancer Awareness Tribal Society cancer. has official exempt status. Hi, Bob. It just says prostate over there. Achieving tax exempt status. That was a big step. <laughs> Thanks. I already reviewed the stay exempt course on applying for tax exemption, and the maintaining tax exempt status course showed me how to keep from jeopardizing my organization's exempt status. But the course needs Killer. the yearly returns. Where do I start? The form looks pretty long. The two courses you mentioned are very helpful. Here are links you can refer to later as your organization grows. We already did that. And yes, Form 990, Return of Organization Exempt from Income Tax, can be a bit intimidating, but there are ways to make it easier. Click the Continue button to see the course objectives. Alrighty, are you ready? Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm ready. Hmm. It's good to meet you, Bobby. In this course, I'll explain 990 we're gonna, series we're gonna forms do this. and show you how to prepare during the year so much of the work is done well before Whoa. filing time. This will include when and how to file, public disclosure of your return, how the IRS uses the information, and auto revocation for failure to file an annual return. I'll also show you five things you can do during the to year to make Form 990 contents. filing easier. This is nice. Seven tips to save time yeah, when nifty. filling out the form. Three common misconceptions about Form 990. And I'll offer some general instructions for filling out the form. But first, click the Continue button to learn which form is right for your organization. I'm interested organization. about the, how the IRS uses the form. I wonder how far into detail they go with that. What do you mean? I just how don't do wonder I how far into detail they go with how they use it, how oh. they use the form, and how they process it, and what it does. I would they assume that it it's all. It's I would assume it's all automated and just scanned in, and whatever value you put in that box goes into that thing on their end, and they store it there. <laughs> That's, you know, like they print out your document, they fold it up into paper airplanes, and they have paper airplane contests in the IRS <laughs> office. And then wherever uh, you land with your paper airplane is whether or not you get like accepted, audited, or denied. <laughs> <laughs> Between Form 990 and Form 990EZ. Well, I am a gambling the form you man. File will depend and so. on your That's where the term in the wind comes from, actually. You know, the IRS. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> if your finances change, so could your form requirements. It's really funny because um, the Form 990EZ is the if one that's required worked, now. You have to file the Form 990PF, yep. yeah. regardless of Ooh, asset or yeah. income size. For most private foundations, three, yeah. So those are like non um, Let's start charities. The form those are the ones that like they don't get uh, tax exempt status, so they have a different form. Or more in gross receipts or total assets of five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, this is a lie. Once again, you can check currently you have window, to do the nine ninety easy. Is required to file yeah, well that that's what told us in, in the beginning, right? Well, yeah, yeah because this is not thing. this was even though updated it in November of twenty twenty one. Not current. So if an organization has less mm. than two hundred thousand dollars in gross receipts, but its asset total is higher, so I d I don't feel like I can write this down. It you know, has to file the full form nine ninety. I'm not going exactly. To. It makes sense. But we easy. have a shorter form, but, yeah. the nine ninety EZ, yeah. for oh, organizations look. that fall below the limits in both categories, meaning those with gross receipts under two hundred thousand dollars and total assets below five hundred thousand dollars. Yay. Most organizations that can select both of the checkboxes here can file Form 990 EZ, but they have the option to file Form 990. The Applying for Tax Exemption course mentioned that gross receipts are the total amount received from all sources before I deduct any costs or expenses. Yes. That's right. 
You should keep supporting documents That's what gross to show the amounts income means. and sources of your income. Select the continue button to learn about a net my organization. Yep. Sorry, I just. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so done with that slide. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, and then you got to keep yes, three years worth. Yes, smaller yep. organizations of may file one so. of the longer forms. Most organizations with fifty thousand dollars or less in but annual growth. Honestly, they'll be electronic. We'll keep all of ours. <laughs> a very mm -hmm, short mm -hmm. electronic notice that only Thank takes you, a few minutes to complete right. online. Great. That will really help. To complete the 990N, you need to include the annual tax period. Show if you're still in business. Verify that gross receipts are normally $50,000 or less. Add your organization's legal name and its EIN. New org. The notice also asks for any doing business as names, DBA. your mailing address, your website, if your organization has one, and the name and business address of a principal officer. Here's a link to the Form 990N page. You'll find the link under Thanks. How to File. Unfortunately, not something I've we can do. I've heard there are electronic filing requirements. If I file a Form 990, can I just mail it in? In your case, because your organization is still small, you probably can. But organizations filing more than 250 returns of any type each year and that have <laughs> assets of $10 million or more must file Form 990 electronically. That means very large organizations with lots of employees we're gonna have probably all of it. We're have, gonna have like an electronic filing requirement because returns yeah, for this gonna purpose like, wow. include Hawaii information returns for like forms meetup 1099 and 990. <laughs> well, no, that, that's like if you have like more than 250 employees, 250 basically. Quickly. Oh, <laughs> Here's a that's what that means. Information on electronic filing requirements. It's not like you have 250 up. fucking Click the continue button charities. To learn where to send no. your forms and the filing deadlines. But, shit, I guess you could. <laughs> When I've completed my form. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm kind of skipping through this because it's pretty straightforward. If you guys want me to slow down or anything, just let me know. And by skipping through, I mean I'm just clicking through as soon as it's done. So. Yeah, no issues here so far. Uh, you know, can you go back to the last slide just once for like. I've heard there are electronic filing requirements. Can, can you like go if through I file one form button? Uh, can I just mail can you it speed in? It up or in no? your case. It's, bro, it's, yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay, there we go. Oh, okay, yeah. Bro. Yeah. So. Okay. So yeah, if we have to file electronic in anyways. That's mm -hmm. what the nine ninety easy is. Um but yeah. Turns include W two, ten nine nine, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're all good. Mm hmm Two hundred and fifty quickly. Here's a link to more information on electronic filing requirements on iris.gov. Click the continue button to learn where to send your forms and the filing deadlines. When I've completed where to send. my form 990, where do I send it? If you don't submit your return electronically, you can mail it to our processing damn it. center. It's just in the Ogden, same thing Utah. again. Here's the address. I heard that May 15th is the normal due date for annual tax exempt returns. That's correct for any organization huh. using I a thought calendar that was January 31st. year as its tax year. The rule is that 990 series returns must be filed we'll by the 15th day of the fifth month after the end of the organization's tax year. That means if your organization uses the calendar year as your tax year, the deadline for 2014 was the 15th day of the fifth month after so, December so this 1st, is, 2014. This is like on April 15th, your taxes are due? It's just like that. Yeah, fiscal year say, filers, taxes 2014 April tax year began on October 1, they get 2013. A whole extra month? Yeah, uh, it's probably honestly for the IRS end, so that once they're like pretty much done going through all the uh, individuals, then they have the next month where they go through all of the. Uh, uh, that makes sense. Uh, things through, through all the commercial businesses. It's to, yeah, it's, uh, well, this isn't commercial. This is uh, charities. There's probably an. Uh, but yeah, yeah. The the other big thing though is if we follow calendar year versus fiscal year, we can set the fiscal year to be anything we want, and we can then our taxes are due differently. We'll probably just do calendar year because there's no reason for us to do fiscal year because we're not trying to, like, game income for different times of the year, anything like that. Makes sense. And then it's... Does that make sense, Kevy? Uh, the part where you make income, you said, in certain parts of the year? So, like, um, certain businesses will change their year of operation Um not to fit the fiscal year so that means like every new year for them is a different mm -hmm. like that's like like their new year 
will be like in uh like like September or something like that, you know, or uh like their year will like change over in uh J- July or some shit, you know, and it's mm. usually based off of when they're making their most what? money and when they're not making money and how to balance that in on their books throughout the year better. Um it's oh, like with okay. the whole Black Friday thing, businesses going into the black from being, you know, kind of at a loss for most of the year, but then like the holidays come around and they get a bunch of money, yeah. right? For retail kind of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They'll adjust their fiscal year to 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 fit that better. Oh, okay. I, I get that. I'm sure my business does that. A lot of them do. Yeah. Well, we are what? we are a seasonal business. Right. Yep. That's very common for things like that. Any other questions? Nope, we're good, we're good. I just wanted to understand it better, that's all. Okay, uh, I'm just going to put... This is the first thing that I'm going to actually put, though, is the deadline. Deadline's going to be the calendar year, May 15th. Yes. I am ready. Me too. I'm just uh, typing this up. <clears throat> September 30, 2014 had a deadline of February 15, 2015. What if an organization needs a little more time? Any form Use 990 or 990 EZ filer can file form 8868 different. to receive an automatic six-month extension. Yep. Oh, form 8868 is available in the Forms and Publications section of irs.gov. If your organization fails to file by the due date or the approved extension date, it may incur failure to file penalties. When you're ready to move ahead, select the continue button. Yes, I know I spelled it wrong. Shut up. Are we good on this? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So what happens if I forget to file or file a report with incorrect information? Or Ooh, you what if I just skip up, the Bobby. parts I don't want to fill out? Right. If questions aren't answered or required schedules aren't submitted, we'll send the return back to the filer and request a complete return, including the missing information. Failure to file penalties could apply. The filer is expected to complete all applicable line items. Do they give you a deadline after they send that? Or unless instructed to skip a line, make an entry, including a zero when appropriate, and provide required explanations. Say that again like for the penalties right um if you don't or if you put in wrong information then they have to mail it back to you do they give you a deadline after that or can you get smacked with the penalty and you got to refill out the information usually, that was my only question usually uh, um in they my, didn't say usually in my experience everything like this usually has like a two week or a 30 day um like response time frame um mm-hmm. but all of it's going to be um clear that's the gotcha. that's, that's the assumption on the timing, yeah, yeah. but like if they put any kind of uh, time frame or anything, it would be communicated. Hmm. Which As is good. good. They have if to I file an incomplete form. Which is good. Yeah. I could receive failure <laughs> to file penalties. Yes, the failure to file penalty for most small to mid-sized organizations is twenty dollars per day, with a maximum of ten thousand dollars, <laughs> or five percent of the organization's gross receipts for the year. That's such an interesting number. One million twenty-eight thousand five hundred. with annual gross receipts exceeding one million twenty-eight thousand five hundred dollars are one hundred dollars per day, with a maximum of fifty-one thousand for each return. The penalty applies each day after the form's due date. This penalty applies to filers of Form 990, Form 990EZ, and 990PF. Select the continue button right, to I'm learn gonna, more about filing requirements. Just for our records, have a little snap picture of this. Yeah, I mean, I get why they do the thousand one million twenty eight thousand five hundred because that's one hundred dollars per day for one year. I that's think. that. No, yeah. that no, no wait, that, no, not, not at all. No, that's yeah. not. No, that just be three hundred. Wait, what? Wait, what the fuck then? <laughs> yeah, that's just a very awkward number in my opinion. Okay, yeah, <laughs> never mind. I read that wrong. But um, yeah, that's okay. that's no problem. Like filing taxes, not a problem at all. Super easy. After we formally organize, how soon should our organization begin filing returns? That's a good question, Bobby. The answer is that organizations intending to apply for tax exempt status should file the Form 990 or 990 EZ for every fiscal period after their date of incorporation. 
they shouldn't wait until after they submitted an application for exemption. Okay, wait. So that means that means when we when we uh, submit to the Secretary of the State for the EIN, so that we can mm -hmm. apply, that's when we start. Uh, that's when our year. Uh, that's that's like our official beginning. Oh, like like when when we get confirmation back. No, no. Or when we get the EIN, the employer identification oh. number. Mm -hmm. So this we need this before we even send in our form 1023, which is the application. Mm -hmm. So this is when we talk to the state that we're incorporating in, when we submit to them, it's it's to the Secretary of State at that state. When we send our articles of our association, um, I'm sorry, after we like form our articles of association and we get our EIN, that like once we get our EIN, that is when we that's our first year. Does that make sense? So like let's yeah. say yeah, yeah. we get it on December 31st, but then we get approved the next year. We'd still have to file for that one day. <laughs> Just there, you know, like yeah, putting yeah, it out there, yeah. but yeah. Return before you receive tax exempt status, you need to mark item B, the application pending mm. box on your Form 990 or 990-EZ, so the form will be accepted by the IRS. What if I file a Form 990-N? There's no application pending box on Form 990-N, but if you're eligible and wish to file a 990-N before receiving a determination letter, an officer from your organization could call the TEGE Customer Account Services line at 877-829-5500 to request permission to file Form 990-N. It usually takes about two weeks for the IRS to set up the filing permission, so if you don't want to wait that long, you can file a Form 990 or 990 EZ, but don't forget to check Box B. Also, if an organization is applying for recognition under 501c3 and wants its tax exemption to be retroactive back to its formation date, it generally must file Form 1023 or 1023 EZ within 27 months of the end of the month it was legally organized. If requesting so retroactive. For more so uh, you, you have uh, almost three years um, to basically start your organization and then like say you, you were like, oh shit, I didn't do all the right things. I didn't apply. I didn't follow my shit. Well, you can like mm -hmm. go back and apply with like a, a, a earlier date. Oh, oh, it's like it's like you need uh, someone to approve that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. But we're not going to be like you, like even though our group started, we're not saying that we're applying from that start date. Our founding date and our application to the charity date are different. Yeah, yeah. Everything's going to be based off of the charity, you know, like when that becomes thing wonderful I accidentally clicked something uh oh um, <laughs> just, just skip right there we go cool to file form 990 n it usually takes about two weeks for the irs to set up the filing permission so if you don't okay we were good I on that last one i feel like i feel like that's wrong two week waiting period <laughs> Well, that's again off if that's filing a postcard like... version of the 990, which is like extremely simplified. So I, I don't. That's not even an option. You have to do the 10 or the 990 mm. easy now. Yeah, yeah. We're so. not filing correctly. And that I should file a 990 series return every year after my organization is formed. Remember that if an exempt organization fails to file for three consecutive years, it will lose its exemption on the due date of the third annual return or notice. It's called automatic revocation. Automatic revocation happens to Form 990N filers too, even though they aren't subject to the late filing penalties. That's good to know. So, if my organization was formed back in 2012, but I didn't apply for exemption until this year, and I've never filed an annual return, is it possible that my organization's exemption could be automatically revoked right after I receive the determination letter? Fucking... Actually, it is. And that's oh why it's important to start filing returns right after your organization has formed. The Shoot. automatic revocation process looks all the way back There's to so the organization's formation there. date to determine the three-year non-filing period. 
You can find more information on auto revocation when in it comes to when 49. you have to file. Say that again. I was listening. Mm. Oh, no, I'm just saying, like, I could see how um, as long as you file within three years, pr like the, the third year prior, you will not get re revoked. Say that um, say that again, but like like go ahead and take your time to think it out because I, I got a little lost when you were explaining. Okay, it. okay, okay. So so okay, it says here you applied for exemption in twenty fifteen. Um you didn't file anything for twenty twelve, twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, what if it was twenty eighteen and you're filing for twenty fifteen? See what I'm saying? What about what about 2016 and 17? Like, what about that? It's like, you so, can kind of like delay it where you don't have to file for, for the years in between. I mean, you do you follow me there. You do have to technically, but you can take your time. No, no, you can't. This no, is you can't. No, like, like basically this is like, if you don't do this for three years, you will automatically lose your sta status. And so, like, no, I will absolutely disagree. That doesn't mean, no, you can be lazy for two years and then just do it every third year. No, no, no. I, was, I wasn't saying that's what, I, like, for example, what... I mean, what, yeah, it's an option, you, but, like, that's, like, terrible. That's terrible organization. I, you, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, yeah, but I feel like people would do that and, like, take money and do things with it. I don't know. Maybe. I, I feel like, you know, maybe that... That that that's all my point was. I'll just I got like, you. Kind of well, I want to clarify something because this is kind of in line with what you're just saying. Even though we formed in like what 2017, we haven't been, yeah, it's been. organized formally. We haven't submitted an uh, right. application for uh, uh, like the EIN. That's what it's talking about with its form organization formed yeah. in 2012 and then operated for three years and then the applied organization for the exemption. formed with the government. Yes, in 2012. <laughs> mm -hmm, um, so like. Mm -hmm. Once we do our application, we'll be like, once we get that EIN, we'll be putting our shit together. Um, like, that's just like right after that, boom, now we apply. You know what I mean? Hmm. So, uh, we're not going to be like waiting fucking years or anything like that. But okay, right, right. if we Which, did, yeah. this is something I wouldn't we, want to, but yeah. There's really no reason to. I mean, it's, no, it's almost really like isn't. if you just don't know what you're doing and you like learn li like later down the line, like, oh, you could have yeah. done this. Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to do it here. But what this is saying is, if you hadn't been doing it for over three years, when you At get your year, approval, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. If you hadn't been doing it for over three years and you get approved, you could automatically be not approved because it had been so long that you were trying to like uh, be exempt for without filing those taxes. Mm. Does that make sense? Like that's how the the three year rule works. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's on that when that third year hits due date, and you don't have the three years prior filed, mm -hmm. you can have penalties and be. Oh no, you automatically get. Uh, yeah. you, you could be automatically uh, revoked. Oh, yeah, not even not even penalty, penalties. Right. Not, like no, <laughs> that's not that's more than a penalty. That's like. Yeah. You're out of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we cool. Go, go on next mm -hmm. uh, slide. Mm -hmm. Click the continue button yep. for a few knowledge checks. Annual filing check. requirements for private foundations are different from other 501c3s. Which of the following is huh. true of private foundations? Private foundations? Select one answer and click the submit button. 990PF. <laughs> That's for, yeah. But this one has the word. I'm not even going to fuck around. Okay, so it's C. Yep. We agree? Yeah, yep. I, I, I think so, yeah. Yep. All right. Yay! All right, cool. Good job. <laughs> Out. Let's try another one. Vernon Feld his his EO's form 990 late for FY 2015. That means... Uh, Fiscal year. Yes, exactly. Clarence didn't file all of the required schedules with his form 990 PF. For small and mid-sized organizations, annual gross receipts, less than 1,028,500. The penalty for failing timely file forms 990, 990, easy word 990 PF is... <gasps> Per day with a maximum of ten thousand dollars. I want to say yeah, it's a for a. small, medium-sized. I disagree. Do you think it's the C? It is C. 
You know what? I th- I think you're right. What do you think, though, Kiss? Hmm. I was looking through my notes because I, I feel like this is something that we touched on in another thing. Oh, it was just the numbers it, exactly. Yeah, it was just a couple slides ago. Yeah, I know that the large companies get fined a hundred dollars a day. Mm. I don't know. I'm stuck for the the charity. I think it's C. I didn't write it down in my notes. I I fucked up there, Uh, but I'm stuck between B or C. I feel like no. Edie, 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 Bo. I don't know, but ten percent. It's hefty. Yeah, that is. Yeah, I think the ten percent was for if it's over, um, the million. Oh, it's just. Oh wait, that's under the million there. Yeah, okay. this is for under the yeah, million. Yeah, this is this for is the small. small and this mid-size. isn't the hundred. You guys do Let's realize? Hey, look at the stream. Because the answer's literally on the right side of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the thing I took a picture of. Oh. So, like on the stream, literally is the answer. It's organizations with gross receipts of one million twenty thousand five hundred or less, twenty dollars per day, max ten thousand or five percent of gross receipts. Oh, are you talking about your your the Twitch stream? Yeah, like on on. Oh, on, I'm not on, I'm not on that one. I know, but, but I'm just saying it's just hilarious. As I just yeah. meekly That's so funny. shamble in, <laughs> it, it's just fucking hilarious to like see that, like the answer is right. Yeah, so it's it's definitely C, no question. Yeah, boop, yeah. boop, yay. <laughs> True or false? An organization should wait until it receives a determination letter from the IRS before it begins <laughs> filing the appropriate 990 series return. What do you guys think? True or false? I think, yeah. What do you think, Kiss? Uh, should we wait until a determination letter? Don't you need to start filing as soon as you get incorporated? Boom! And here's the answer right next to it. Begin filing year. Every year after incorporation. And you have to mark item box or item B, isn't it right? Application pending box is what it yes. says. So like once we get the EIN with the state, you know, like then we're going to apply. Oh. But we don't wait for the IRS to say, yeah, we have to like the IRS could take over a fucking year to say, yeah, right. <laughs> we have yep. to file in that time frame. And then we got to let them know that like application pending. I so. I thought receiving determination letter was the same as EIN. No, so like that's no. the the EIN is from the state uh uh, uh secretary of state, and mm-hmm. then the IRS is going to be giving us the determination letter uh, on whether or not we get five hundred one c three status or not. Okay, so yeah, definitely when you get the EIN is when you should be yes filling out the yep. nine ninety yep. easy exactly. Yep. Go, Bobby. Where? Play? Which there. of the following is true concerning automatic Why is it always so different? Select one answer and click the submit <laughs> button to check your answer. Which of the following is true automatic revocation? Select one. Automatic revocation is not applicable to, 10, to 990N filers. If an organization fails to file the application 990 series return for three consecutive years, it loses exemption on the due date of the third annual return or notice. That is a yes. The automatic Definitely revocation be. period process looks back to the 1023 application date to determine the three year non filing period. Nope. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Actually. I'm, yeah. I does think it, it. Well. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. If requesting retroactive. The yeah. Yeah. Well. Whoa. The automatic Wait, which revocation. Which of the following is true concerning automatic? Okay. Automatic revocation is if you fail to file within the due date of the third year. Yeah, I think this That's thing... That's what automatic revocation But it looks is. back to when you applied, right? No, because I think this thing right here is actually the retroactive exemption thing. I I think so, too. This thing right here, the automatic revocation process, looks back to the 1023 application date to determine the three-year non-filing period. I believe oh. that's the retroactive exemption because that had to be within 27 months. But that would be 36 months if it's three... Ah. Oh, it's select one. So, oh, no, it's select. Oh, oh, it does say select. <laughs> I guess it's B. It, yeah, it's B. All right, cool. I, that was perfect. <laughs> Guys, I said, it, I said it was B. Well, I mean, we all, I, I, thought, it, I thought we had to select more. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's funny as shit that it was like, no, 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 it's only one guy. not tax forms. 
And their primary select one in isn't to report financial information. They're intended to provide the IRS this and is the what you want to give, Kevin. information about your organization's programs and activities, relationships, yes. transactions, and governance, in addition to revenues, expenses, and assets. What does the IRS do with all the information? It's used to ensure exempt organizations abide by tax laws. Because Can the I law requires filers to report off? full and accurate information, with pub, with pub it's important stickers, that you yes. understand how to complete <laughs> yes. Form 990 correctly. Also, because most Form 990 data is open to public inspection, a properly filed Form 990 series return can show the public how your organization is organized and operated as a tax-exempt entity, yeah, yeah. is in compliance with applicable tax laws, is well-governed and managed, furthers its mission through its exempt activities, and provides valuable services to the public. Yay! Select the Continue button to learn more about public disclosure. That's cool and all very straightforward and easy. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't go, okay, okay. I mean, this is yeah, stuff I, that we've covered. This is what I wanted to see. Ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of don't really know what to note on this. Um, yeah. I Guys, I'm really sorry. I haven't really taken a whole bunch of notes. Me neither. Really this one's a very, this. very not note-driven one. It's, yeah. Like we were saying, this is this was a very black and white will provide a copy kind of, of our annual filing to clear anyone cut who asks for it. Situation. But they'll remove certain information on Schedule B, Schedule of Contributors, first. That's correct. The same is true for your organization. Yes, we have to do the if same. If anyone asks for your three most recent information returns, you have to provide them. We learned this last penalties. time under disclosed Here's uh, a link documents. Here's the required disclosures mm -hmm. course if you want a refresher. What else do I have to disclose? That when I did asked? take notes on. Other so. IRS yes. filings from your organization have to be made available too, like your original Form 1023 or 1024 application and Form 990-T if you're a 501c3 organization and you file any. And because the information on your application for exemption do not and your re annual filings are do open to not the public, include be personal. Not to include any social security do not include yeah, personal. This is not if about us. This is about the 501c3. Yep. That's the EIN. It has yep. your pub crawlers will have its own either. identity. The so charity itself is its own identity. Security. Yep. Instead, Yep. Are there any organizations and if anyone that ever don't have to file a form we're gonna go after them legally. Yes, click the continue <laughs> button for more information. Because we... <laughs> but yeah, this is, a, this is a very, very important part. We are not the application thing. And we do not provide people our information through this at all. You know, like, our information is not going to be pulled by anyone to see this stuff ever. But the, pub crawlers the largest will. category of tax-exempt organizations that doesn't have to file a Form 990 series return is churches <laughs> and certain other religious Our organizations churchers. affiliated with a church, like seminaries we already or know that. societies. Also, churches aren't required to apply church for tax exemption. Church of Sangs. But if they do and are recognized as exempt by the IRS, they still don't have to submit an annual Form 990. It just like blows my mind. That just blows However, churches churches my mind. must file Form 990-T to report unrelated business income if they have more than $1,000 of gross unrelated business income in any taxable year. Are there other organizations that don't have How would they determine so they it's unrelated? There are a few others. So they get a free $1,000 every year. No, no, no. How would they determine that it's unrelated to their business? Of the Form 990 instructions. Select the continue button for a few more. You know what I mean? Write, don't they have to write if it's like a... They don't a submit a <laughs> return. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> They only oh file the 990T if it's unrelated business income over $1,000. How do they determine it's unrelated they if they don't file? Like, they could be giving you like a fucking golden bar. I'm just saying, if we wanted to do this as easy as possible, Church of Science. Which is the following can Richard yeah. obtain by reviewing <laughs> yeah. the organization's yeah. Form 990? But that's not worth it. <laughs> All right. Knowledge We're check. not being in it for the easy shit. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to do both. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Richard loves animals and wants to make a contribution to his local animal shelter, but doesn't know how much, doesn't know much about it. He knows the shelter is a tax exempt and it files a Form 990. Which of the following can Richard learn by reviewing the organization's Form 990? Select one answer. Activities and programs conducted to accomplish its exempt purpose. Relationship 
relationships, and governance of the organization. Financial activities. All of the above. So it's asking us what's on the form 990. Is it just financial activities? Does it have relationships and governance of the organization? And does it have activities and programs? I want to say it's B and C. I believe it. Should, it you can only select one. Oh. So would it be all of oh, the above? Oh, select one. Financial. Oh. Activity. It's for sure financial, of course. <laughs> but on the Form 990... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so what else? Ew. What else? Yeah. See? See all these questions? These are just basically what do you do? How do you do it? Do you did you do this? Did you do this? Then it is all of the above. Did you do this? Uh, yeah, that seems did like an all this? of the above answer. Did you do this? Well, it, it you gotta explain how you how exactly. you were approved. You gotta explain like like these are these are the people that did stuff. These are your directors. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is so easy. <laughs> oh, I like why does this like oh my god. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. Grants and others, yeah, fuck yeah. Grants and others, I see yeah. that legal accounting and lobbying. Yeah, how much did we spend on <laughs> fucking royalties or make on royal? How much did we get on fucking travel? Like, oh man, I'm so stoked. <laughs> fucking stoked. Grants payable. What? We're, we're gonna we're we're gonna give out grants now. Oh man, uh, like looking at this makes me happy. Did the organization contemporary contemporary contemporaneously contempor contemporary that's a word and a half Contemp contempor oh it's contemporaneously I know contemporaneously but I don't like that word did the, organi did the organization contemporaneously document the meetings held or written actions undertaken during the year by the following the governing not but we already do this it's a yes government uses big words um very specific but yeah it's definitely all the above Yep. Yeah. Yep. Had to had to yep. Google what That's contemporaneous right. meant. <laughs> what can you actually? What does it mean? It's uh, existing or occurring in the same period of time. True or it's an adjective. The sample sentence is: Pythagoras was contemporaneous with Buddha. I didn't know that. I learned so two can, things. Can, can I? <laughs> so can I be a part of this whole like, you know, charity, and then I could become like a politician? Yeah. Could lobby for me. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Whoa. Whoa. Hold up, guys. Whoa. There's whoa. a big. Dis Wait. There's no. A, no. No. There's a huge line that you can't cross with charities. I forgot. You cannot do that with political. No. I forgot. What, what, no, no. If, what, if you wanted to do anything where like there's uh, money coming in and it's not a uh, fucking uh, held back by the charity restrictions with uh, um, politicians and stuff, you have to do a PAC or a super PAC. Well, it wouldn't be Which so is a political people. action committee, and those are completely different, and that is not at all what we're talking about. But no, no, yeah. I'll, I, was lobby for Kevin. I was making a joke. I was making a joke. Kevin's ideas. We could <laughs> lobby for legislation that Kevy likes, but not yes. hell yeah. We could not lobby for Kevy's legislation for Kevy. No. Yeah. Exactly. That is a big no, and They're I big difference. Yeah. Was making a joke, but I totally. Yeah. I mean, we making a we making a video out of this, and I just want to make sure people know what we know what we talking about. <laughs> hey, man, it's very it, when it comes to that those lines do not get crossed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if they do, you mm, you get shot in the foot. You get shot in the kneecap. It's an airsoft gun, but you still get shot. <laughs> All right, so knowledge check. All tax exempt organizations must file a form 990 series return. Uh, no. False. There's a yeah. couple different versions. Even the even the false. Churches oh, don't either. Oh, that's it. Yeah, must yeah that's file it. Form churches don't. Mm -hmm. Series return. Oh, motherfucking churches. Which of the following is my 501c3 <laughs> required to disclose to the public? The schedule of contributors. Three most recent. Returns form yeah, 1023 application be... 1020. Oh, so... Not the last one. <laughs> not the last one. I mean, if anything, you could even say A could no. be one of them. Like, no. That's something you... no, you can't. You do not have to disclose the list of donators. Oh. You only have to disclose the amount and the date. 
Yep. You do not oh, have to disclose right. the contributors. You do to the IRS. Yes, yes, yes. But you oh, do not course. to the public. But yes, definitely. That's correct. Sweet. Progress trap. You've learned. learned about Explain the 990 series forms. When and how to file the 990. Public disclosures. How to use the IRS form. form you should use. Or how the so IRS uses the form. Public <laughs> disclosure <laughs> twice. I was like, wait, that's not what you it You said says. public disclosures twice. It's only up there once. Well, you know, my brain <laughs> you know, turned off. The public disclosures it's are okay. particularly important. Public yes, disclosures. Because yes, that could be any any moment. All right, moving on. Now. Absolutely. Boop. 990 preparation step one. You may want to download a copy using this link. I already Get did. Sandwich, some coffee. Instructions and the various schedules you may <laughs> That's need how you to prepare. prepare. I see there are a lot of schedules. Will I have to fill out each one? Yes. Most organizations will fill out only a few of them. Smaller organizations yes. shouldn't have to fill out many at all. How do I make this form easier to complete? Well, first, burn it. you need to share the burden yeah, so through do? delegation. Share the burden. I can't rely on just Everyone the has Everyone has to file their own 990s, it and then like we, like, is average them together, <laughs> and then that's our group's 990. <laughs> no, that just sounds like too much work. <laughs> no, about it would that's all be just wrong. Unnecessary. It would yeah. all be so wrong. governance questions to your board or so executive wrong. committee. <laughs> and send a financial portion to your CFO, treasurer, or CPA, then send program and activity-related questions to the CEO. Okay, actually, the, I, I like this. Staff. I like this breakdown. Select the so, continue button for another form preparation step. Cover, governance portions. Board of Directions. <laughs> Uh, board, financial wait, board of directors yeah. yes i know <laughs> no we just have a board of map quest employees over there oh <laughs> and then program and activity Related questions. Oh, so it's just like recommending, hey, break up the 990 EZ form. It, uh, basically, you what know? it's saying it's is... a pretty good way yeah. to break it up, though. I mean, it's, yeah, it, I mean it's, it's like, hey, whoever does the thing that we're asking about, send that to them. Because they probably know the most about it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Right? And like... If even though organization... even though this comes down to the state, this is pretty much the way things are going to be broken up. The governance is going to be held by the board of directors. The financials is going to be organized by whoever's the CFO or if we hire out to a CPA. And then the program and activities is going to be ran by whoever the uh, chair or CEO is. V very easy stuff, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We definitely... Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. no. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it, it says, oh, send the the financial portion of it to the, the treasurer, whoever's going to mm. be that. Like, like that, the that, CFO that, that is a chief financial officer or treasurer. It's basically just this different names of the same thing. Mm -hmm. One's more like should I keep track of company those based ones? Government Definitely. based word. Again, like what we tell our, our names are and stuff like that. I, we determine that. Before preparing mm -hmm. the 990, determine if you have any related organizations. You'll use Schedule R of the Form 990 to report them, as well as any compensation, sales of goods or services, leases, loans, shared resources, and transfers of cash and property to or from your related organizations. Remember that a related organization is an organization with one of the following relationships to your organization at any time during the tax year. A parent organization which controls your organization, a subsidiary, or one that's controlled by your organization, brother or sister organizations, sponsoring organizations and contributing employers to voluntary employees beneficiary associations, or a supporting organization. For more on related organizations, use this link. All right, that's something I want to look at. That was a little, a little confusing. It's pretty straightforward. Um, For me, it was. <laughs> on the, like... Basically, if you have sister and brother organization, organization, 
Yeah, those are just like, different names yeah, of the same thing. Um, so like, imagine it like this uh, on a hierarchy scale. So like, if you have an organization that um you interact with on an operation level, either above you, below you, or beside you on a like hierarchy scale. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or if you have like a significant supporting uh organization that like basically pays for all of your stuff even though they don't technically own you okay so like if there's another organization that you have like you basically exist because of them oh i see or another organization exists because of you or mm -hmm. you and another organization exist coexist on the same kind of level like maybe you share directors or, or something or you share resources or you share assets or something um yes yes that's what I, this I is actually there's there is in the in the pool industry there's a couple companies that some are just distributors only some are the manufacturers only but they work together. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of concept. Yes, yes. And, and, and I get that. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so we're, we're good to continue then. I, I'm just going to write this down real fast. Oh, ready? Ready to go? The schedule are instructions. When you're ready for another suggestion, select the we continue won't, button. We won't, but cool to know. Another effective preparation step is to determine your key employees. Key Which employees. workers are considered to be key employees? Anyone who received over $150,000 in reported compensation by your or any related organizations and had control of 10% or more of the organization's assets, income, expenses, Activities, budget, expenditures, or employee compensation is a key employee. Knowing who falls into this category is important because the Form 990 asks if your organization engaged in any business transactions with key employees, how much key employees were compensated, and whether any of your key employees had business or family relationships with other key employees. So I'm going to pause this real quick because I want to say that in the real detailed IRS documentation, this is one of the biggest situations. Um, they're very, very strict on that, on how much you own of something and how you interact that owning of that with being in a charity and soliciting for uh, payments of things and soliciting for like jobs or uh uh, different like uh, services or things like that. Mm -hmm. It's very, very restrictive on that stuff. So um, pretty much the way you get uh, that taken care of is if someone owns something, like like you, you got to make it explicit on why you're using their service or paying them that money. Like let's say that like we have a charity where this the head of the charity is making $200,000 a year. And we pay him another million dollars a year for his like software company that writes like print hello world. Like, you know what I mean? Like we can't do that shit. So this kind of oh, harkens back to where we had to like vet, um, sort of like how we had to vet contractors and whatnot. Yes. Yes. Uh, so it, it's like and that in the extent where like you can't just, um, you have to give it like three people and give them their fair shake. And... Yeah, you, you, you have to have a reason of why you chose that over another one. There has to be right. some kind of documented uh, decision making. Well, because that, he's my friend, and he deserves be... the money. Could, yeah, could could it be that? <laughs> well, well, no. Like, I mean, I like, like this. I like this guy more than that guy. Well, no, but like how you word that <laughs> as a director, like a board of directors, you could be like the three of us got together, we looked at these companies, and we chose this one because it was cheaper than the other three. That's why we chose it. That's what I mean. Okay. All right. Controlled over 10% of the organization's income, assets, expenses. Wow. Can't type. Activities. Budget. Expenditures. 
or employee compensation. Cool. So another thing on that, like for instance, if someone was making a shit ton of money somehow with this charity, whoever's making all of those decisions, it needs to be done as like a board of directors or as a group instead of just like that one person. However, if they are just that one person, then they're considered a key employee. Sweet. I was going to say, yeah, in some states, you only need one yes. board of directors. Yeah. So, so that you would have like one key employee then. But I think it's interesting because it's only if they make over $150,000 and all that other stuff. $150,000 is a lot of fucking money. Holy shit. Yeah. That's a that's a fucking look up how much the like head of some charities make. Oh my god! Like the head of said Susan G. Komen. Scam. I don't even need to know. It's a scam. Sorry. Um, form nine ninety <laughs> rule request. Did you say fall. it's a yes? Way. Yes, absolutely. Susan G. Komen is a fucking <laughs> scam. Like, like I, I absolutely do not think that they are good for any kind of research or any kind of money going into people that need it when it comes to. Cancer. I remember when I applied or uh, <clears throat> when I was working at this grocery store and uh, there's like this charity that that are like that they work hand in hand with that grocery store chain and they have like a like a person come in and talk to you about hey like this is what we represent this is why you should donate to us you can donate whatever you want and then uh, so <laughs> We're all like in like this like classroom kind of base setting thing. Uh, once we're done, you know, you donate if you're or you don't, and you walk out. And I donated some, and then the next day I saw him come in. He was wearing like the nicest fucking suit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and this man like was crying in the fucking class, like talking about experiences that he had which i personally felt you know what i mean mm. uh tugging not, on your not, heartstrings not, not through not through yeah yeah tugging on the heartstrings okay it's like when you watch those sad commercials about animals that need help and oh those damn animals they I love the death. god damn it but yeah, and then I kind of saw, I was like, oh man, I don't, that just doesn't feel right, it just doesn't <laughs> sit right with me, you know? That's pretty, yeah. That was pretty much it. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't regret it, but I was like, I should have maybe... See, there's been such a good mood, he put on his some... best suit, his Sunday's yeah. best. There's, um, there's <laughs> a few yeah. services, um... I won't cover it right now, because I don't remember off the top of my head, but there are a few services mm -hmm. that, like, rate... The uh, like the charities. No, I don't oh, want to say rate problem. the charities, but it's like rate the uh, uh, the value of the dollar that you put into a charity and how much uh, of that oh. dollar actually goes to what they say. Right, because yeah. yeah. that is true. Because yeah. all of this stuff has to be recorded. It's just a yeah. lot of these places where they do it sketchy will make it very convoluted and hard to find, even though it's going to be available. You know, because they have to make it available. Mm -hmm. Well, like. Like, for instance, like, seeing how much percentage of a dollar breaks down in a, in a thing, like, most of the sketchy ones will hide it, but the non-sketchy ones will be transparent as fuck, because they want people to know about yeah. that. Exactly. Out of All your dollar, 20 cool. cents goes to paying for fucking operations. Yeah, Maybe, I mean, I mean, that's, you know, that's like... Cents of that goes towards this. That's exactly what we were talking about earlier. I think so it might like have been before you jumped in. a can of corn. Kiss, you know but I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it, you know? How we have our uh, income and outcome like broken down. Mm -hmm. Having that transparent is, to me, very important. Absolutely. Oh, same here. Yeah. Absolutely. Directors, we want that anyways. That's yep. good to know. Just to make I'll it determine easy. who our key employees are this Well, it also holds us so accountable, to too. So if anyone comes in after point. us and wants to change That's shit, a good start. it'll While be you're visible. Doing that, you should yep. also determine your officers, directors, and trustees because the same questions apply to them. Here are definitions of officer, director, and trustee. Select the continue button for my fourth Form 990 preparation step. I'm actually going to copy this because this 
Yeah, I'm gonna snip that out real quick. Yeah, this is this is exactly the kind of stuff I want to have on record. Any sort of hard definition that they're willing to give me, I'll I'll copy down. Yep. All right, so form 990 oh, preparation man. step three. Officers, a person having administrative or managerial authority in a corporation, a classified by statute, an officer of a corporation is an employee unless he or she performs nor services or only minor services and neither receives nor entitled to receive any remuneration directly or indirectly. The president, vice president, and secretary and treasurer of a corporation are corporate officers. Unless provided, unless otherwise provided, a member of the organization's governing body at any time during the tax year, but only if the member has any voting rights. A member of the advisory board that does not exercise any governance authority over the organization is not considered director or trustee. Got it. Got it all? Cool. Yep. You got it, Kevy? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Uh, I was just reading it over again. Yep. Step four. Questions on the Form 990 ask for information you may not have easy access to. For instance, you'll need to report Don't wait together. Important to details. Officers, directors, trustees, and key employees by related organizations, family and business relationships between your officers, directors, trustees, and key employees, grants and other assistance provided to your officers, directors, trustees, key employees, and their family members, and business transactions between your organization and its officers, directors, trustees, key employees, their family members, and businesses they own or control. How can this I get is, all the information? This is what I was talking about earlier. This is the shit that they take super fucking serious. And this is the stuff where it's like, where did your money come from? Where did your money go? And who owned the thing that you are interacting with? Because it's very specific on what you can and can't do on that stuff. And that's... That's the stuff that was like the fucking publication, like 557 stuff that's very, very detailed. But this is the major chunk of all of that. Actions and relationships. Well, you don't need to hire a private investigator, but we do expect 990 filers to make reasonable efforts to obtain this information. Select the continue button to find out more. <laughs> Wait. Talking about private investigators. Okay, so like you got to realize the scale that they're talking about, though. You know what I mean? Like, remember how they don't really care about your key employees, and then until they make over one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. this is is this is this is talking about like fucking Trump family level shit, where it's like, okay, oh. I have my kid that runs my charity. I'm gonna give my oh, kid yeah. a grant through this charity, and then I'm gonna do it in a way where the charity gives it to him so he doesn't have to get taxed on it. That's the oh, kind of shit wow. that they're like, yo, you that's, can't do that. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's like, like we're, we're not at that yeah. scale, but it's very important to understand these things because even at a small scale, keeping all that shit separate, like for instance, if I owned a business and then like hired myself as like a board of director without even telling anyone, boom, right there. That's no, that's absolute no. But like, if we agreed and it was still kind of shady and all that shit and it was like do, like do, doing big money movements of any kind through accounts or anything, that's another big no, you know? So really it's just don't be fucking shady. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's what I'm getting out of that. Yeah, it's it's but I'm it's I'm happy that at least God they kind of try to be clear about this, you know, like mm -hmm. transparent about this. Because that's what fucking, yeah, man. And when what, it's when, it, when it's talking about things like uh, you don't have to hire a private investigator, but you have to do your due diligence, what that means is you have to do reasonable effort to figure out if the thing you're hiring is someone's thing or not. Because like you can, for instance, I could make a shell corpor corporation. I could make eight shell corporations, and that eighth one is the one that we're hiring. It would take a fucking ridiculous amount of time and effort to figure out who owns all of those things, right? But let's say it's one shell corporation with my name on it as a sole proprietor. And we try and say that, like, oh, we didn't know. 
Well, when we file our fucking uh, independent contractor uh, forms, we would find out then. So, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It does. It does. I think the last example, especially. <laughs> yes. We don't want to end up, yeah, picking up someone's own organization that are trying to slip by. Because mm -hmm. then when we're with the, you know, actually write it all out on paper, it's going to look really fucking bad. Yep. Organizations. And officers. Uh, I want to put a V. I can't hit the C for some reason. Directors. I don't even know why I'm typing all this out. But anyways. I'm oh, and uh, the other thing with, like, the family members and stuff. Like, let's say that, like, uh, fucking you and Marks are married, Kevy. So, like, imagine that, like, Marks owns her own, like, company. And you just end up doing this same kind of shady shit, but it's not yours, so that's okay. Well, because it's your family member, it would still be the same liability. Mm, I see. That makes sense. I, I was actually writing this down just to... Just to... Or not writing, but typing it down. All right, ready to go on the next one? Mm -hmm. Yep. An effective way to gather facts and figures for your Form 990 is to send a questionnaire to each director, officer, and key employee asking them to reply with their compensation from related organizations the relationship to and business transactions with related organizations, any transactions between those person's family members and related organizations or between related organizations and businesses that those persons or their family members own or control, any family or business relationship between those persons and other officers, directors, trustees, or key employees, and so what and this is, or other this other right here is those persons or their family members receive from <laughs> send the a questionnaire to each director. Yeah, no, no, no. I guess no. I so, should also ask our related org. So this is the way that the organization is able to have all of these things and or operate in all of these things, and then that responsibility of, um. Did you know who was doing what that it just was talking about? If you send this out and someone lies to you, that's then on them. So you put oh, your due geez. diligent effort to figure it out. But if you don't do this, then there's nothing for them to see that you were trying to make the effort to figure out what the connections were. So like this, this, I this see. is this like these uh, questionnaires that you send out, you include in the 990. When you send it in, so that it's on record. Just as a so, cover your ass sort yes, of move. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. And, Love that CYA. And honestly, like sending it out to everyone and having them all mark, we did none of these things. Totally cool, because we probably will have none of those things. But then there's a record of it. Is the main thing. Yes, documentation. Document everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's pretty much the impression that I've gotten throughout this whole thing. Yep. Document. Everything. Don't do shady shit. <laughs> yep. You should be good. Only do shady Make shit if you're a church. No, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the thing I've learned about Much all love. of this is Much love to all. why didn't we just make a church in the first place? It would have been a lot easier. <laughs> hey, so that, that that conversation is gonna have to be had. Is in the group. I gotta be honest. It will be had. It, it's just, like, hey, who plans on dating who in the future? I'm just <laughs> I mean, like who plans on I don't know. I'm just fucking around. If we call our members family, are we all related? Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm just typing all these out. Oh, that's what I was doing. I was sniffing that. Yeah, actually, I think I'm going to do the same because it's going to look a little cleaner. I have legal eagles finger po poking well feather poking in there but that's all right yeah mine too <laughs> all right this 
sweet. Organizations to complete a similar and she's just talking about if we have yes, uh, great idea. related organizations, do we have to send it to all of them? Yes. And definitions from the Form 990 and its instructions, then ask each officer, director, trustee, key employee, and related organization to return the questionnaire in plenty of time for you to complete your 990. Select the continue button for my last preparation step. So all this stuff is pretty much like who are the big dogs? What do they own? And what decisions do they make in your organization? Because like they get real specific on it. I have the what feeling that really, keeping good records. What if you don't own much? If you don't have like assets and stuff. Perfect. I mean, so I mean, when you, you when you answer home, when uh, you answer these things, you just say no, none, nothing. Like, what was your relationship to business transactions uh, with and related organizations? None. Do you know what I mean? Didn't do shit. Mm -hmm. Like, like the these most of these questions will be like, yes or no. If yes, what? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Records throughout the year is the best way to save time filling out my form nine ninety. And you'd be right. Keeping good records of information for your form nine ninety and organizing so it's easily accessible is the key. Keep records supporting the information reported on your Form 990 for at least three years too because the IRS can examine returns up to three years old. State law may specify other record retention rules, so check your local requirements. Now let's try another knowledge check. Knowledge check! We ready? Oh, yeah. What can Bobby yep. do throughout the year to ensure her Form 990 is easier to complete? What can Bobby do throughout the year to ensure her Form 990 is easier to complete? Select all that apply. Increase wages for your board. Okay, Bobby. Thanks, Bobby. Re <laughs> review your Form 1023 application. Decide which schedules to complete. Maintain detailed records. I'm going to go with BCD. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What do you think, Kevy? I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why oh, they would. Oh no. Oh, it's just D. Oh, what can she do throughout the year? I didn't check that. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's literally the thing that they just said. Like, yeah, like it's the thing. Over. It's the thing they just said. I didn't catch the do throughout <laughs> the year. I gotta read the questions better. Fuck. We fuck. Okay, that's it. We're done. Uh, yep. All right, man. <laughs> Got to start all over next week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do it all again. Congratulations. All right. Learned some helpful steps to make tips on what to do during the year. Now let's to go over seven tips filing. that will save you time when filling out the form. Wait, now we're doing more tips? I thought we just went over tips. All right. Just the tips. Just the tips. My first suggestion for filling out form 990 is to use the tools provided in the instructions. First, the sequencing list walks through what we think is the most efficient order to fill out the form. An example is to complete parts one and two last, mm -hmm. even though they are the first parts you see. It's because they're the totals. Because part one is largely a summary of information mm -hmm. reported exactly. elsewhere on the form. And part two is the signature block. The and you want to sign it after doing all the work. Page 30 through 33 tell you what types of compensation and fringe benefits need to be reported on Form 990 what persons they need to be reported for, and where to report them. The glossary defines over 100 key terms used throughout the Form 990. Whenever you see a word or phrase in bold type in the instructions, you can check the glossary to find out what that word or phrase means. The instructions also contain appendices that provide helpful explanations and background information on topics such as how to determine gross receipts, Requirements for public disclosure of Form 990 series returns, what is an excess benefit transaction, and rules for receiving and receding charitable contributions. Select the Continue button for my next tip. It seems they help you out a good bit mm -hmm. if you if you do need it. All right, just typing up.
up that last one. Man, I cannot type today. Alrighty. Ready to move on? I really like that it has the glossary. Instructions. So this is what it was talking about. I can even get phone help. Just call in. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I assume the right, electronic filing may save some time too. Right. First, e-filing reduces IRS processing time, saving taxpayer funds. Because the e-file system and commercial software include error detection, e-filing also reduces errors which result in more accurate and complete reporting, which lowers the risk of penalties. Okay, cool. It's required. Between e-file returns <laughs> and paper returns okay. is startling. Yeah, like we have to. Re we, yeah, we have to file it uh, electronically right now. Errors in approximately 22% of forms 990 and 31% of forms 990 Oh my God! Filed by paper during the 2015 filing season. In contrast, we've identified errors in only about 1% of forms 990 and 990EZ filed electronically during that same period. So we encourage you to e-file. Wow. E-filing makes sense. Yes, it or sure just the numbers. Some yeah. CPAs are really bad at paper. <laughs> you should yeah. use the form to brag about what you do. For instance, part three allows you to describe your three largest. This is funny. Brag about your organization. Measured by total. <laughs> Highlight. If you have more than three programs, Your organization's you accomplishments is the proper o. term. Kevin. The only but one of the sixteen brag. That must be Highlight your organization's <laughs> accomplishments. <laughs> accomplishments. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah I got a five one C three. What of it? Such as the number of persons you provided assistance <laughs> well, like, during the year. Honestly, I'll be thinking like. Like, I want to be like, we fucking sent a thousand issues. switches to uh, you can also a hospice donated services patients. Shit, free use like, yes. that would be fucking amazing. Or facilities, because these types of donations can't be reported as revenue anywhere else on the return. Select the continue button for tip four. Okay, let me actually write these down. Um, Use specific measurements. Include numbers. <laughs> I love this. This is so fun. Uh. Notice how it's looking for your three lar largest accomplishments, and notice how I wanted it breaking up where we have three things that we focus on donating and doing. It's almost like. Mm -hmm. I know how to optimize for this. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Like after, like they they basically look at your biggest contributions, and like if you're doing a whole bunch of little things, they don't really give a fuck. But if you're doing like major things that are like uh, measurable, cool. If you have more than three major. Yo, what if we could have sangs? travel the world and do karaoke for people for the pub crawlers so like sort of. are, are we providing a service for the public or are we somehow making their lives worse we're providing we're providing a service is this sort of like you ever see that Sang's show an idiot karaoke? abroad yes is, this, is it gonna be sort of like that we're just sending them to mystery locations be like you gotta play karaoke here Bro, we should, no we should, where he's we, so like it's <laughs> the whole thing is just like a camera pointed back at his face and you can't even see like the thing that he's doing and we just blindfold him and he has to like wake up in some like crazy cool like different location around the world and then like find his way back <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like kidnapping someone i mean a little bit but it's like like we drop him in like south korea with like um someone that doesn't like oh like like God. someone that only speaks swahili <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, you you gotta bring Swahili bro back with you, and you two have to make it. Here here's a thousand dollars, things, and then and then the video is just his face the whole time. 
<laughs> so you like don't even see where they're at except for what's behind him. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my god! You just hear the Swah- Swahili guy in the background. You don't even see him. <laughs> All right, number of publications. I'd watch that. I'd watch that. <laughs> I actually would too. That, that's what, like, dude, Trisha Sings. <laughs> <laughs> also mentioned, donated. I mean, you know what we could do though is like, you know, we have the annual meetup. Like, that's like the thing that we do on the Sunday for the meetup. <laughs> Just drop Sings off somewhere and he has to find his way back to the crew. Oh yeah! <laughs> also mentioned donated services and free use assets. Schedule O's only schedule all organization submit. Mm. The IRS tip number four: a link between good governance and tax compliance. Organizations that implement sound risk management policies really improve their ability to be tax compliant. One purpose of Part 6, Governance, Management, and Disclosure, is to help organizations consider which policies and procedures can help them manage legal risks most effectively. For example, if you adopt conflict of interest and compensation policies, you'll reduce the risk of prohibited private enormment. Do I have to adopt every procedure the 990 points out? No. Policies and procedures that are appropriate for your organization will depend on its size, type, governing structure, culture, and unique legal risks. Yeah, so like so all of this will be completely spelled out for ours in our Articles of, the, so, of six, Incorporation. Or Articles of Association. Options. Just answer like no. All those policies, all of the, like the how we make those decisions, all that shit. Year. Squared away right then. A governing board that's proactive, informed, engaged, and independent will manage an organization more effectively. Adopting sound risk management policies and procedures will help your organization comply with the law and achieve its mission more effectively, whether or not it's required to file a Form 990. Is there anything else you want to highlight in Part 6? Yes, Line 1B asks how many of the governing body's voting members are independent. A voting member is defined as being independent if he or she meets all three of the following conditions at all times during the tax year. Fuck you, I was typing something. (laughs) (laughs) My bad, my bad. I know you guys were following that. No, no, you're good, you're good. I I like to read over things a couple times, you know, just to... Look, they even give you provide policies to help you out right it actually feels like they're not trying to screw you they kind of feel like they're trying to make this easier (laughs) is that independent link like a link to another document or is that like a pop-up i think that's the what's popping up member is defined as being independent if he or she meets all three of the following conditions hey. i'm just gonna snipple snap that picture There we go. All right, so not compensated as an employer officer did not receive over $10,000 to in the tax year except for reasonable compensation for services provided as a governing board body member. Wasn't involved in a transaction with the organization or related organizations. Reportable on Schedule L includes family members. All right. So that's like if we have like people on the board of directors that aren't doing officer roles. We ready to move on? Yep. At all times during the tax year. First, the voting member was not compensated as an employee or officer of the organization or a related organization. 
The voting member didn't receive total compensation or payments exceeding $10,000 during the tax year from the organization or a related organization unless those payments were reasonable compensation for services provided as a governing body member. And neither the voting member nor a family member was involved in a transaction with the organization or with a related organization that's reportable on Schedule L, Transactions with Interested Persons including a loan, grant, or business transaction. Select the Continue button for more on Part 6. Any questions? Nope. 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 I, I've been part taking Part 6, line 2, of is also important. That you know. It asks about nice. relationships among directors, officers, trustees, and key employees of the organization. Your organization should report any family relationships between these people in Schedule O. For instance, report relations like a husband and wife, or siblings who serve on the board of directors, or when one serves as a director and the other serves as an officer. I guess that includes business relationships. Yes. For instance, if two of your directors are also directors or owners of a for-profit entity, or if one of your directors is employed by another director. There are three important exceptions that should significantly reduce the number of business relationships you need to report in Part 6 and Schedule O. First, Relationships resulting from transactions in the ordinary course of either party's business, like a fair market sale of goods or services. Second, the privileged relationship of attorney-client, physician-patient, and priest-penitent. Mm -hmm. And third, business relationships arising from transactions of less than $10,000 in value. Another item to point out is Part 6, Line 4. It looks like that's where I report major changes to organizational documents like Articles of Incorporation or Bylaws. Yes, these also include changes to the organization's name, purpose, the role or authority of any governing members, the composition or authority of the board, and how its assets are being distributed upon dissolution. Examples of changes that don't need to be reported include changing the registered agent or the time and place of board meetings. Any significant changes to the organization's activities should be explained in Part 3 of the Form 990. Select the Continue button for more tips on Part 6. I'm just going to write one, one of these things down that it was covering. So when it says don't report changes to the organization's registered agent, like that's one of the bullets, like is a registered agent meaning like a officer or no a registered agent would be like a lawyer that represents us. Ah, I see. Okay. <clears throat> like for instance, uh, you can like hire someone to fill out all of our, stuff and like yeah them signing off on stuff can still be legally counted as us if we hire them as the registered agent kind of thing it's just legal yeah like termination it's like, or determination excuse me it's liability yeah. kind of look at it like that like if you're yeah. hiring someone you make sure you hire like someone you you think you trust or no like no 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 it's, it's just um like you you don't have to report it if we hire someone else to represent us Oh, I see. Because, honestly, whenever we submit whatever it is, it'll have those different people on that already. Um, mm -hmm. Report activity changes in Part 3. Three of the Form 990. Wait, was it going to pop up the three exceptions? Yeah, there you go. There we go. Priest penit penitent. So again, these are these are for big value moves. And like like shit, you have to report ten thousand anything over ten thousand dollars to the IRS, like coming in out your account anyways. So that's the exact same. Yeah, I, I mean those seem pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say the last point, the last number, you know, three. 
seem important, but mm-hmm. it's redundant as well. A little bit, yeah. Ready to move on? Yep, yep, yep. I see that line 12 asks whether my organization has a written conflict of interest policy. Right. If you answer yes, it asks whether your officers, directors, trustees, and key employees are required to annually disclose any potential conflicts. Also, line 12C asks you to describe whether and how you monitor and enforce compliance with this policy on Schedule O. Other policies or procedures addressed in this section include a policy regarding oversight of local chapters, branches, or affiliates, a whistleblower policy, a document retention and destruction policy, and a process for determining the reasonableness of compensation of officers and key employees. Select the Continue button to learn about disclosures in Part 6. Schedule O. Other policies. Oversight of local chapters, whistleblower policy, documentation retention and destruction policy, process to determine reasonableness of officer and key employee compensation. I'm writing those down. I like those. Thank you, Google. I did not know how to type out policies, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Mine's disclosures. I keep fucking that one up. It's really funny because, like reading these things out it sounds kind of complicated but i have like direct relatives to things we're already doing in our group and how we already have things done where i'm like oh that's all that is we should have in our process to determine the reasonableness of an officer we should take in consideration how much yelling they do I'm sorry, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> I, dude, I'm a very aggressive person. It's really weird because I don't see you that way at all, ever. Never have. Well, I'm surprised, Bash. She's Anyways, yelling this whole beating. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't help but scream when I talk. Right. All right, I'm going to go on to the next one here. The last section, <laughs> Thanks, part Kiss. six, that lines was... 17 through 20, ask about disclosure. It includes whether and how your organization publicly discloses certain documents that are required by federal law to be disclosed upon request, including Form 1023 and Form 990 series returns, and certain documents that generally are not required by federal law to be provided to the public, including governing documents, a conflict of interest policy, and financial statements. Do all 990 filers use Schedule O to show if they make their governing documents, conflicts of interest policy, and financial statements available to the public? You just put it on a website. That's also where they show how they will make them available. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thanks. Oh, Bobby, we have technology. What's your fifth tip for filling out Form 990? Tip right, number yeah, five you post is to up use the Form 990 who as a we are, for what we do, your organization mm-hmm. through the year, yeah, which will yeah. make completing the form easier. The Form 990 exactly. asks about most areas of tax-exempt law that might apply to an organization. Things like excess benefit transactions, unreasonable compensation, unrelated business income, lobbying and political campaign activity, and employment tax. It's valuable for the organization's board and staff. Oh, that's actually to really smart. With the 990, so they can better understand activities that could potentially jeopardize tax exemption. You that's said we really don't have smart. to adopt every yeah. policy in Part Six, right? Right. The policies and procedures in Part Six are not required by law, but they're generally regarded as best practices of good governance and help you stay on the path of compliance. 
I see that line 11A asks if my organization provided a copy of its Form 990 to each voting member of its board before filing the form. Right. To answer yes to this question, you must provide a copy of the completed Form 990 to all of your voting board members prior to filing it, whether or not any of the board members actually review the form. But if you redact the names and addresses of contributors in Schedule B from your board members' copies, then the answer to this item will be no. Regardless of how your organization answers Line 11A, it must describe the process that its board and management use to review the Form 990 in Schedule O. But don't worry, there's no right or wrong answer to these Line 11 questions. You just have questions. to say how you do it. And the IRS isn't trying to catch you doing anything wrong here. I agree a board review of the Form 990 could lead to better information. And reading through our Form 990 will educate board members about our organization's activities, relationships, transactions, finances, and legal risks. Yay. Makes sense. We all good here? Yeah. 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 There are six categories of people to report in Part 7. The first is officers and governing board members, like directors or trustees. Even if your organization didn't compensate officers and governing board members, you're required to report all of them in Part 7. What if we didn't compensate any officers or directors? You can simply check the box above the Part 7 it says no. <laughs> neither the organization nor any related organization compensated any current officer, director, or trustee. Then you won't have to fill in compensation columns D, E, and F with zeros, and you'll also let the IRS know you didn't make a mistake by leaving the Part 7 table blank. The second category of persons to be reported are key employees, which we talked about earlier. The third category of persons you should list in Part 7 are your organization's current five highest compensated employees who received over $100,000 in compensation reporting on Form W-2 or Form 1099 from your organization or any related organizations other than officers, directors, trustees, or key employees. The fourth category is former officers, key employees, and highly compensated employees your organization or any related organizations compensated over $100,000 for any type of service. The fifth category looks similar and includes former directors and trustees whom an organization or any related organizations compensated more than $10,000 in exchange for past services provided as a director or trustee. And by former, we mean they served in those positions any time during the prior five years but didn't serve in those positions during the tax year. The last category of persons to report in Part 7 are independent contractors, in particular, the five most highly compensated independent contractors the organization paid over $100,000 for services. Independent contractors include both businesses and individuals, whether or not the organization issues them a Form 1099. These independent contractors are reported in Part 7, Section B. And why did they separate it between the 100000 and the 10000 If it's anything over 10000 wouldn't that also include the 100000 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, I think the the verbiage difference was um compensation um like directly versus like being I don't know that, no it's the exact same thing it's the exact same it both yeah. Yeah. yeah whatever yeah it's a weird one mm -hmm. and then independent contractors Alrighty. Moving on? Yep, I'm good. Yep. What's tip number six? It's an explanation of what type of compensation to report in Part 7. First, for each person listed in Section A, list reportable compensation from the filing organization in Column D. By reportable compensation, I mean the amounts found in Box 5 of Form W-2 and Box 7 of Form 1099 miscellaneous. 
Next, in column E, report the person's reportable compensation from all related organizations. There's one significant exception for column E, the $10,000 per organization exemption. You only need to list reportable compensation from a related organization that exceeded $10,000 during the tax year. In column F, your organization should estimate and report most types of other compensation, meaning compensation that doesn't appear on forms W-2 or 1099 from both your organization and other related organizations. This includes housing benefits, split dollar life insurance benefits, expense accounts, tuition assistance, travel and moving expenses, and sick and vacation leave cashed out. Certain de minimis and working condition fringe benefits don't need to be reported. Motherfucker, you think However, that's over $10,000? $10, $10, <laughs> has a $10,000 per item exception, so you only need to the report... The fuck is that over $10,000? ...to a particular person that exceeds $10,000 during the tax year. This does not include health care benefits, retirement plan benefits, and other deferred compensation, which must be reported regardless of the amount. Your organization must report compensation in Part 7 for the calendar year ending with your organization's tax year. So, if the organization's 2013 tax year began on October 1, 2013 and ended on September 30, 2014, it will report compensation it paid during calendar year 2013 on its 2014 Form 990 Part 7. This is different from reporting in Form 990 Part 9, Statement of Functional Expenses, where the organization will report compensation. It's funny, this sounds really dry and confusing a little bit, but it makes super not sense. The calendar year ending within that tax year. It would have been a lot better if they would have, like, on the right side of this as they're going through it, just shown the part that they're talking about, because after looking at the, uh, the Form 990, all of this makes total sense. I was going to say, a lot of this feels like it'll probably be straightforward it is. on the form. It is. It's so straightforward on the form. Like, just, like, right here, let's, uh, let's see, do I have it up still? I don't think I have it up still. One second. One. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Oh, good. Uh, oh, well. All right. But, yeah, um, this is all, like, like on the form itself, it, it actually says this even easier. <laughs> Schedule J says it's used for compensation reporting. It is. You'll complete Schedule J only if Part 7 lists a person who received total compensation over $150,000, a person who received compensation from an unrelated organization for services rendered to the filing organization, or someone who was reported in Part 7 as a former officer, director, trustee, key employee, or highest compensated employee. Schedule J includes a detailed breakdown of officer, director, key employee, and highest compensated employee compensation. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to type this one all the way out just to make sure it makes sense. Ah. Any questions? Mm, nope. No, no. You sure, Kevy? I mean, it sounded like you might have. The only thing I'm thinking of is just it, they were talking about earlier breaking the 990 easy form up into like different parts. Uh huh. And it's like, who's gonna get this part? I want to do. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like thinking, like, okay, well, some I I don't know. So like, uh, nose goes. Honestly, the the way we break it up is was uh kind of how they said earlier is where it's like the people doing those things go over those things. Yeah. So like the financial person, the financial stuff goes to them. The program and activity stuff that goes to the person doing that. The governance right, portion right. that goes to the the board. You know, um, yeah. 
and like stuff like this, like well, we're not gonna be paying anybody. Yeah, that's so the like, thing is, I'm, all of this is okay. gonna be marked no. So like everything that's covering right now, when it said a couple slides ago, if you're not paying anyone, make sure to check this box that says you're not. That's yeah, what, yeah. that's what we're gonna then, be clicking. Because then you don't have to fill everything out. Well, it's not that you don't have to fill anything out. You don't have any responsibility for it because you're not doing yeah. that. So like, if we wanted to start paying people for stuff then that's when we start doing these things but i want to make sure yeah. that we have this information understood even though we're not doing it mm. i see i see so like when we make our articles of a, a uh association we have to specify in there if there's going to be a change how that happens so like for instance if even though we're all done voluntary down the road if something needs to change we need to say how that would happen as a group. And most likely it's just voting. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, tip okay. number seven. We're ready for your last Form 990 tip. My last tip is about filing schedules. The Form 990 includes 16 schedules, but you only have to fill out a schedule if your organization <clears throat> participates in the activity the schedule asks about, and most organizations will only have to fill out a few. Part 4, Checklist of Required Schedules, has a series of trigger questions that ask for a yes or no answer, and, depending on your answer, may direct you to complete the corresponding schedule or schedule yep. part. Select the Continue button for a Knowledge Check question. Okay, let's do it! Which tips will save Bobby time when filling out her Form 990? Bobby is ready to prepare and file her Form 990 for her charity because this is her first time. She's a little overwhelmed by the form and the 16 schedules. Which tips will help her and save time? Explain activities and accomplishments in detail. All 16 schedules must be completed and filed. Oh. E-file the return for more complete and accurate reporting. All of the above. A and C only. E, E, E. What do you think, Kevy? Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking E, A, and C. All right, we're going to go with E, and that's correct. Oh. Yeah. Well, Kiss, you were wrong. No, he was right. Why, why were you wrong? He was was right. I wrong? No, he was right. It was, it was E. <laughs> he said B. He said E. Oh, no, I said E. He said like, E. Oh, I just said B. He said E. I was like, he has been around oh. for a long time. <laughs> Oh. All right, so we're going to go over misconception <laughs> so number have one. a long list of common misconceptions about the form. Yes, we do. Let's talk about <laughs> yes, the three we most do. common misconceptions. The first misconception is that there's always a correct answer. How do I answer correctly when I'm <laughs> oh, not absolutely it. sure? <laughs> Our most common answer is review the instructions and let them be your guide. The instructions can't address every single scenario. If the instructions seem ambiguous, use your best judgment to give a reasonable answer. If the instructions don't clearly address your scenario, you won't be penalized for making a good faith effort to answer correctly. And if you think a particular part of the instructions need clarification, please let us know. The Form 990 instructions are always a work in progress. Select the Continue button for another common form. Oh, we're going to let you know about all your missed freaking done things with your stupid I just think it's so funny that workshop. They, they say use your best judgment but there's always a correct answer no there's no 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 it <laughs> says there's always a correct answer not true yeah yeah so yeah. Like, like 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 for instance when we were having arguments about like what a uh, uh statutory employee was and shit like that that would be one of these mm -hmm. instances right here where we would have to use our best judgment and should probably write them a letter and say hey this is weird what should we do Ah, I see. And the reason we would write a number, what a nominal value is. The reason we would write a letter is because then we could keep a copy of the letter and show when we sent it, so that if there's any questions, we'd be like, "Well, we hit you guys up. Y'all never responded, or if they did, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, uh, you want like that? It goes back to like keeping records of the communications and stuff that we're doing. Ah. The second common misconception is that Form 990 reporting must be consistent with GAAP and other accounting standards. It's not true. Oh, fact, cheers. Fuck yeah. Cases, Thank you very Form much. Appreciate it. Is inconsistent with some accounting is that you, standards. Kiss? For instance, donated services and the no? donated use of materials or facilities well, thank you. can't be reported as revenue on Form 990 
or in Schedules A or B. Also, compensation reporting in Part 7 and on Schedule J must be made on a calendar year basis rather than on a fiscal year basis. I don't think that applies to my small organization. No, it probably doesn't, but select the Continue button for the last common misconception. It might apply to you. So does this make sense? Uh, yeah, just let me finish. No, you're fine. I'm taking my notes here. So you're like, we were actually talking about this earlier. Yeah. We the, we the literally services. talked just about this specific Doing thing. Doing work and then donating. How it's it, not. Like, like yeah. Dope. Like the, it was the conversation last week too. Like how you're not going to be able to determine the name, the the value of something that someone's donated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. So you don't even have to like. There's there's that. no number to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just oh it's it's that you. thing. Yeah. That's what they gave us. It's it, it's more like just a gift. Mm -hmm. But it's it no fun. it is a donation. It's just a tangible donation. All right. Or I'm good to go on that. I'm, I'm ready. All right, sweet. Say so, we're 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 almost done. Almost. Oh, yeah. Will your organization receive grants? I hope to receive some later this year or next year. Then be aware that some organizations incorrectly treat their so-called grants as contribution revenue when reporting on the Form 990 Statement of Revenue and on Schedule A. But just because they call a payment a grant doesn't mean it's a contribution. When an organization gets paid for providing a service, facility, or product that primarily benefits the group paying, those payments should be reported as program service revenue, not as contributions. Hmm. Is that true, even if the payment comes from a government or foundation? Yes, payments from government units or foundations should only be reported as contributions if their primary purpose is to enable the organization to provide something for the direct benefit of the public not to serve the needs of the government unit or foundation. Select the continue button for another knowledge uh, check. Wow. Bro, okay, so check this out. All right, so let's <coughs> say we, we have it set up where like 25% of our money coming in automatically goes to uh, send in uh, video game consoles to uh, disabled or uh, hospitalized people, right? Right. If we got a grant, that funded just that part, that grant would then be a program service re revenue. That's crazy. Or no, that would that would be that be considered a contribution because it goes to help the public. Payment for government units or foundations are contributions if the primary purpose for your organization is to provide something for the public. Clarified. Thank you. Yep. But if we were oh, grant, we were using it internally to yes, yes. Like, now I see the difference. Yes, okay, yeah. okay. Now I see the difference. So like, if we was uh, uh, paying for the program and the program then did that, then it would be a program service. I get that difference now. Okay. Yep. Yep. Wow, that's a fine line. <laughs> it's just like uh, whether or not if we're uh, putting our hands on where how it's moving. I see it. I see that now. Cool. I'm, mm, I'm going to take a picture on that one, actually. Just because. Don't want to trust yourself to sum it up. Yeah. I want it, yeah, I want that to be uh, highlighted in the same way, you know, like with the, yeah. uh, the bowling and everything. Yeah. Um, you guys going to move on to the next misconception? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, I'm good. Can you name the three check. common oh. misconceptions about the form We're nine not ready for the next misconception. We're ready for knowledge check time. What are the three misconceptions? Mm -hmm. Or There's what are the right answer? Three. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Grants from government units and foundations are always treated as contributions. Form 990 returns are filed by exempt organization. Form 990 must conform with GAAP and other accounting principles. 
So I Form think 990 is due by the 15th day of the fifth month after the end of the tax year. We know that's true. I'm thinking Alpha, Bravo, and then Delta. Yeah, just because those were three things we talked about just now. Yeah. What do you think, Kevy? Yeah, I was trying to figure, I was trying to pick out the ones that we just talked about. Yep, it was those three. Boop. Okay. Wait. Submit. No, I didn't get a submit. Oh. <laughs> Can you go back? I don't know if it works. Sometimes it hates it. Yes, we got it right. There we go. All right. Is there General else instructions. When filling out Form 990? Yes, just two more things before we finish the course. First, remember that every line of the core form must be completed unless the form specifically instructs you to skip a line. And what if there's not enough room to fill in all the answers? If you can't answer a question in the space shown, you can continue your answer on Schedule O. That's its main purpose. Also, please don't attach anything to the form that isn't requested in the instructions. <laughs> Select the Continue button to finish this course. Imagine some of the shit they get. We just start including children's drawings in there. <laughs> we uh, interpretive danced our um, return. Here's the video. <laughs> How much did you spend? Contributions, contributions. <laughs> so, I actually saw the whole dance in my head. Yeah, it was beautiful. You guys just missed something amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I truly we, believe that. We just send some nude pictures in with it. <laughs> just be like, this, no, 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 this no. is to grease the wheels. We send, we send a calendar for all the people in the office. Yes, I was going to say it. With our shirts off. <laughs> the pull crawler swims through count. And we're, and we're chopping up wood and we're fucking like sanding down. It's just saying his face shittily photoshopped onto a bunch of other things. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, cool. Going to move on? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Congratulations. You've Yay! learned all of the objectives for this course. We, we did it, guys. We did it. It only took an hour and 52 minutes. Actually, not bad. Thank you for explaining no. so much about the Form 990. You're welcome, Bobby. We've gone over a lot of information, so here are some helpful links to remind you of what I already what got this discussed. one up. I'm going to be looking Remember at that one. That I'm going to be looking at this one, too. specific information about exempt organizations. You can get to the exempt organization section of irs.gov by going to www.irs.gov slash charities. To keep up to date Yay. on developments in the tax-exempt world, subscribe to the EO Update. The electronic newsletter link is on the left side of the webpage. They Don't must. worry, we won't spam you, and you can unsubscribe anytime. If you have any questions on how to complete the Form 990 or 990EZ, please refer to the instructions. We've worked hard to make them helpful. If you still have questions about <laughs> exempt organization issues, including questions about filing requirements and how to fill out forms, please call the EO Customer Account Services line at 877-829-5500. We can't answer tax questions via email. The phone line is your best option. Hmm. Also, Publication 557, tax yes. exempt status for your organization, this is, the big one. is a valuable Yay. reference guide for tax exemption law and issues. It can also be ordered by calling one 800 Eight two nine three six seven six. Alrighty, and continuing. On behalf of everyone in the IRS Exempt Organizations Division, thank you for taking the Form 990 Overview course. You're welcome. Before you leave, please take a minute to send us your feedback about the course. The information you provide will ensure that this and other courses at Stay Exempt provide a valuable learning experience. You know, actually, this, this one wasn't as gimped up email. as the no. other ones were. Yeah, this one, I, I feel like this one was older. Your opinions of the and, um, and to notify like, the ones that have this, like, the bar on the bottom that, like, we see the whole progression. I feel like these are from 2014. Please call the customer account services line. And, like, all the stuff from 2019 is fucked. <laughs> well, then it's the same <laughs> damn guy who's doing it. Feedback. You, can print out you know, speaking of the guy doing it, I can, like, as recognition for attending this imagine what the room the guy that's doing the voiceover sounds like because of how it's reverberating in his recording. Like you can kind of hear it's an empty room with the desk. Yes. That's about yeah. the size of like two cubicles with like yep. nothing. Yep. It has just enough echo. Yeah. There's, it has echo. There's no, there's no carpet and, yep. Yep. and, and he's definitely like 
in a very he's like, uncomfortable he's like in chair. A concrete, he's like in a concrete fucking box. I was thinking right linoleum now. or something, maybe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely tiled floors. Yeah. Like Deep very plain, just... ugly tiled floors. It's, it's got oh, that. Oh, that, yes, that, they have to be ugly. That section uh, roofing thing where on the ceiling you can like push those little like squares around. The drop know? ceiling. Yeah, the drop ceiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, shit. He's um, probably just going insane by the end of all of recording all these, being in that room. Shit, dude. He getting paid hourly. Two hours at a pause. He, he getting paid hourly. He is. He is definitely making sure everything sounds as good as possible. Mm-hmm. He's making hey, that. It's the right money. way. Yeah. So the again, the older ones. This we we saw this last week too. The older ones um do this uh correctly. Could. See, they had to change things up, try and update them. Just made them worse. Mm-hmm. Although, it, it does feel like the IRS Act is actually, you know, they said that call in or do whatever, ask for help, mm-hmm. and they'll help out. It, it actually does feel like, for once, the government's not trying to fuck you here. They're it's... actually legitimately mm-hmm. trying they to They want help you to you do out. it correctly. They want you to follow their parameters. <laughs> well, yes. the, the thing that I actually got from this, I was thinking about earlier today before we started is I really do want, because I have a list sitting over here of the corrections that I think that they should make on those other ones, and I'm actually going to put this together in a nice little email and send this to because I was like, man, they put enough time and effort of putting this shit together that, like, I feel mm-hmm. like since we're going through it, no one else on their end is probably re-revealing this shit, so it probably would be really helpful to do that so yeah i think definitely going to and yeah we, yeah we'll, 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 we'll give them free this. information <laughs> <laughs> we'll sell you this data for a hundred and fifty thousand dollar contribution <laughs> oh give me a maserati <laughs> we're gonna need a couple hundred and fifty thousand donations <laughs> <laughs> everyone needs a maserati but anyways, um, so yeah, that's it. That was section five. That was form nine ninety. Um, thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you, Kevy. Thank you, Kiss. Fucking successful. Thank you. It was fantastic. Yeah. Any other uh, stuff about this? Because we'll just cut the video for now and we can chat it up afterwards. But like, any other thoughts or questions about it? Nah. nah. All right. Well, I'm not gonna close. Yeah. Don't the close the thing. <laughs> don't do the thing. Speaking of which, I'm actually gonna close My- out. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful yes. week. We will see you Thank next you week. Thank you for hearing us out. For section Thank six. Thank you for joining us. I don't even know what next week is. Join us next time. Until then. We'll be here with our dry jokes and good humor. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>